This isn't one of those videos that's been hyper optimized for an algorithm. It's a video dedicated to my unconstrained nerdom as I stumbled across this incredible study. I was blown away by the images that the researchers captured, like this one. I'm gonna explain what's going on here, but one aspect that I'd like you to appreciate with me is that long thing extending from the cancer cell, yes, it's a cancer cell, is basically a cellular arm reaching out to an immune cell. The image alone is haunting, but there's something especially wicked about it that I'll be explaining to you. So this story takes us into our body to discover the interplay between the immune cells in your body trying to kill cancer and cancer trying to evade death. That image, including many others that I'll be showing you come from this study, where the researchers wanted to know why cancer cells reach out to immune cells that are trying to kill them. That's where we get images like the one that we just went over, or these. To describe this a bit, uh, you're looking at another cancer cell, the flat cell there, and the two T cells, or immune cells, and there's a tentacle, arm, or uh, in cellular terms, a nanotube, that extends from the cancer cell and attaches to both immune cells simultaneously. The image zooms in more and more until we see the surface of the cell with the nanotube attaching to the membrane. If you're curious how we get images like this, it's a technique called a field emission scanning electron microscopy. It's an incredibly powerful microscope that gets multiple nanometer resolution. Another electron microscope can help give us the resolution of molecules within the cell. They're incredible technology. Anyway, the question is, why is that cancer cell attaching at distance to these immune cells? For that, we need to use another type of microscopy called fluorescent microscopy. Here, the researchers are labeling mitochondria on the immune cells only. They use a label, then wash the excess label off. So what you need to know is only the immune cells have green tagged mitochondria at the beginning of the experiment. Keep that in mind before I show you the next picture. Beginning the experiment, all green mitochondria are in immune cells. The red stain is a stain for the cells themselves. It does not distinguish between cancer and T immune cells. So we'll rely on the labeling in the images to distinguish the cells from each other. Okay, got it? Here we go. Now, the left panel is only the marker for cells. It's an actin stain for those in cell biology. And we see the T cell at the very bottom and the cancer cell up top. The yellow arrow points to that nanotube. The middle panel is the mitochondria only. The right panel is the combination image overlaid. So do you understand what happened here? Remember, the mitochondria are only stained in the immune cells, and yet, Hopefully you get it now. Mitochondria originating in the immune cells are ending up in cancer cells. So this raises two questions. One, how? And two, what purpose does it serve? Well, my friend, let's continue. The researchers figured out that the cells have to be in relatively close proximity because they co-cultured immune cells with cancer cells or put them in a Boyden chamber, which essentially slightly raises the immune cells from the cancer cells. So they aren't even with one another, although they're still technically co-cultured. Okay, this data looks hectic, but I'll walk you through it. The left panel is the cells co-cultured at the very beginning, so baseline. The middle panel is 16 hours later. The far right is the cell 16 hours later, but in the Boyden chamber. I won't go over too many more specifics, just know that if the dots, which represent cells, move to the top right of each panel, that means they are positive for tagged mitochondria. Again, these originate from immune cells. The MDA MB231 cells are cancer cells. The CD3 plus are immune cells. In the middle panel, we see a migration of cancer cells entering the top right, indicating that they are now also positive for tagged mitochondria. Yet the Boyden chamber data does not show this shift. Hmm, 
I wonder why that is. You know, let's just show it anyway. The colors are the same. So green is mitochondria and immune cells, but this time we'll be looking at natural killer cells, another type of immune cell. It's not as clear here, but we clearly see the cancer cell, the immune cell, and the tentacle, the nanotube. The yellow arrows indicate to mitochondria. Caught in the act, cancer cells are literally stealing mitochondria from the immune cell. How freaking cool is that? I mean, yes, I, I realize it's sinister as well, but purely from a cell biology perspective, this is incredible. Okay, <laughs> exceptional, but this still leaves us with an outstanding question. Why? Why would cancer cells steal mitochondria from immune cells? Well, one answer is obvious, but the other actually isn't as obvious. The obvious answer is that it allows the cancer cells to have more active mitochondria to potentially generate cell energy for growth and survival. We see that here. The cancer cells, when they're alone, the only 4T1 condition there, have a certain level of oxygen consumption indicating mitochondrial use. However, when they are co-cultured with immune cells, there's a dramatic increase, not seen in the Boyden condition. Fun fact, this is an experiment that I've actually done before. It's called a seahorse experiment and allows us to measure the different aspects of mitochondrial function. Anyway, the obvious answer is increased mitochondrial capacity. What about the less obvious answer. For that, let's lean on this data, where the researchers treated mice who had cancer with inhibitors of these nanotubes. That's the one with the uh, complicated name, so L778123, which sounds like a fancier C3PO. Uh, the researchers are measuring the amount of T cells that are activated or invading into the tumor to kill cancer cells. The control or the condition not given this treatment is the vehicle condition. That said, most doses did not help, but the 120 milligram per kilogram dose seemed effective, indicating more immune cells are invading into the tumor. So what does that tell us on why cancer cells steal mitochondria? Well, it tells us potentially that if cancer cells are able to get their hands on more mitochondria, they end up deactivating immune cells, allowing them to evade immune detection. Now, is this because they get more mitochondria, which allows them to do more, or because more mitochondria change the cellular signaling somehow? Or is it because the immune cells lose mitochondria and now have less capability to generate energy? So I, I didn't show you that data earlier, but when looking at the oxygen consumption data, like we did with the cancer cells, the oxygen consumption is reduced in the immune cells, most likely because they are literally losing mitochondria to the cancer cells. So is it the gain of mitochondria in cancer or the loss of mitochondria in immune cells or potentially both? Well, we don't know based on this data or exactly how mitochondria offer this immune evasion ability. Additionally, the drug used, the you know L778 blah, 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 is not specific to nanotubes. So there is a possibility there's an additional effect of the inhibitor that is actually causing this increased activation of immune cells. That is a limitation of the study. There's more to this study, like the exact way that mitochondria are packaged to be sent off across the nanotube to the cancer cells, which happens through these vessels called exocysts, complexes, uh, not to be confused with the exorcist stories, although this might be kind of comparable almost. These vesicles containing mitochondria get released from the immune cell across the nanotube, and once the vesicle binds with the cancer cell, it releases the mitochondrion into the cancer cell. And then the mitochondria uses an internal motor network to deliver the mitochondrion to where it is needed, essentially. This study is absolutely deserving of being in the journal Nature. It's an incredible piece of work, but if you're into this kind of stuff, then I'd highly recommend the attached video you'll get a kick out of that one too. Thanks for nerding out with me.